What up, party people? So the cigarette lighters and the trailblazers, envoys, and their relatives are on all of the time. You guys have asked me if you can change that, and that's what we're going to do today. Like all of the content on this channel, nothing about this is going to be fast or easy. So if you want a fast or easy answer, don't be wasting my time. We're going to learn how it works, we're going to come up with a plan, and we're going to rewire the cigarette lighter so that it turns off when the truck is turned off. So let's do this shit. What's good everybody? Well, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get has to do with this cigarette lighter outlet. Well, these cigarette lighter outlets here. What people want to know is, is there a way to make this outlet turn off power when you turn the truck off? Well, the answer is yes. I kind of want to show you guys what I'm talking about here. You can see the little green indicator here on this vape means that it's charging right now. So if I turn the truck off, you can see the green indicator's still on, it's still charging. So first, let's understand how all this crap works. Now in the 2003 Trailblazer, you could have as many as four outlets on this thing. You've got what they call the cigar lighter in the dash, you've got an aux outlet in the dash, you've got an aux outlet in the console, and an aux outlet in the rear. There are some changes between the earlier Trailblazers, like my 03 and 04, versus say 07, 08. Some stuff did change back here in the rear fuse box, but we're really going to be concerned about the outlets in the dash. The same stuff would apply to the outlets in the console or in the rear, but like I said for this video, we're going to be talking about the ones in the dash. So you've got your front fuse box and the cigar fuse, the 20 amp fuse. Now that fuse, not only does it power the cigar lighter in the dash, but it also puts power to the OBD2 connector. The cigar lighter is then grounded at our good old friend Ground 201, also known as Splice Pack 201. The cigar fuse has power at all times. Moving over to the rear fuse box, we've got two aux power fuses, depending on your year. One's going to go to the rear. The other one is going to power the second port in the dash, as well as the port in the center console. This also has power at all times, even with the truck off. What's been requested is how can we make one or more of these outlets have power that turns off when we turn the truck off. Now if you look online, you're going to see a bunch of opinions about different ways to do this. None are necessarily right or wrong. The question I'm asked is how I would do it, and that's what I'm going to show you. So let me whip up a little schematic, and we'll see what I'm going to do. So here's my plan here. Yeah, nice plan. Way to show the wrong cigarette lighter outlet. Sweet. Hey, who was that clown that said that the Trail Void Library of Information must be preserved by librarians? Here's seven inches of OC for your mouth, biatch. All right, so eight months ago I done fucked up because I drew a diagram for the cigarette lighter on the left when I did the modification to the cigarette lighter on the right. So here's the revised diagram. It's pretty much the same. The rear fuse box, aux one, 20 amp fuse. It's gonna put power on the orange wire, which we're gonna cut at the cigar lighter. One part of that wire is gonna to go to 30 of a relay. The other part of the wire is gonna to go to 87. 86 is gonna get tied into a switched power source. And 85 is gonna get grounded to the black wire at the cigarette lighter. So when you turn the truck on, the switched power wire, well, it's gonna get power. It's gonna turn this relay on that's what's going to make the connection between 30 and 87. So power from the rear fuse box, aux one fuse, is going to come down, go to 30, across 87. Whoop. And it's going to put power to the cigarette lighter. When the truck is turned off and the switch power source is no more, the relay is going to be open because the relay's off. There's no connection between 30 and 87 anymore, which means our outlet's going to turn off. Also, I'm using a snap-on pen. How does that make you feel? So I've gone ahead, pre-wired this thing. I've got all my colors oriented of what needs to go what, so I don't have to keep referencing the relay itself. This is just a basic SPDT relay. Let's pull it to the truck. Let's access the cigarette lighter wiring and wire this bitch in there. So in the Trailblazer, if we were gonna do this to the socket on the left, we'd wanna pull out this fuse right here, fuse number 13. It says Cigar. This is also the one that does power to your OBD2 connector. And if we were to do this to the outlet on the right, 
We want to pull out this fuse right here. This is aux power one. And that's the one I'm going to be doing this too. So we'll just pull him out. As you can tell, tablet's no longer charging even though it's plugged in. So I know I don't have power on the right outlet, which is the one I'm going to be doing this modification to. So you don't need to pull the battery or none of that shit. Just pull the fuse to the outlet that you're doing the modification to. In this case, the right outlet. As you can see here, both of these cigarette lighters or power outlets, whatever you want to call them, they're color coded and the connectors are color coded. So for this, we want to do the black connector and to give us a little bit more room, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop the HVAC module out of there. Now we don't have to totally unplug him, we can just leave him like that. See, just gives us a little bit more room. So we can go ahead and take our orange wire, we're just going to cut him, go ahead and strip a little bit of insulation off of him. Now there's a couple ways we could do the ground to the relay. My way would be to just cut the ground wire, strip a little bit of insulation off of each end. Of course it helps when the car cooperates with you. Monsieur Butt Connector. Crimp that motherfucker on there. Good pull test. That's cool. And the last one that's left. This was what's got to go to our switched power source. Now whether you have the automatic HVAC controls like Minty Green does, or you've got the regular controls like my Black Trailblazer does, either way it's the same. Inside here, there's going to be an ignition 3 circuit. And in this case, somebody's already crappy tapped into ignition 3. I don't believe in these things so much, I, I got to take it out. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to cut where were they put that crappy T-tap in. They crappy tapped another brown wire in it. But this is the brown wire that's ignition 3. Alright, so finally it's not 100 degrees outside. I'm going to take this opportunity to show you guys how to test for your switched power source at the HVAC controller. As you guys saw in minty green, someone just played the brown wire guessing game. I don't roll like that, and I can't tell you guys to roll like that either. I don't want you guys to be uh, professional guessers. So I'm going to take one lead from my meter. You probably can't see it, but I've got it grounded at the metal shield underneath the steering column. You guys are in for a treat with this shaky cam footage. So if you look really close between the tan with the brown stripe and the yellow, there is a dark brown wire right there. So key off, I got no voltage, key on, I've got voltage, 
and then with the truck running I got voltage so I know that that's my switched ignition circuit in the manual HVAC controller in my 2003 Trailblazer I also noticed my 03 does not have two brown wires in that connector it only has one so maybe with the manual controls you're only going to have one brown wire in there you can do the same test if you've got the Trailblazer with the automatic temp controller you can do that to properly find the switch 12 volt ignition source in the HVAC controller connector to use to turn on a relay to put power to your cigarette lighter. The whole point of this is, as you saw on Minty Green, someone just played the guessing game and just T-tapped a brown wire and that wasn't it, so they moved on, T-tapped another brown wire. With a multimeter and a little bit of time, you can test the circuit yourself and know without doubt that you've got the right circuit. There's something else I can throw in here too. You probably noticed in both of these videos, I never unplug the HVAC controller. I don't do that for a reason. It's not because I'm lazy, it's because I don't want to fuck anything up. Now whether we're talking about the manual temperature controller in my 2003 or the auto temperature controller in the 2004, there's one thing that's going to stay the same. This is a module. It's actually a computer. This thing will learn the values of all the little doors that are in the HVAC system. The door is what is going to either divert cold air or hot air through your vents. They've got doors for which vents the air is going to move through. And this computer, if you will, it remembers the minimum and maximum range of the doors. If power is removed and hooked back up, it has to relearn the door values. And the way it does it is, it's going to extend each of those doors through its full range of travel. That can actually go disasterifically wrong. I mean, we're talking about 16-year-old plastic gears in these actuators in here. They don't really want to be overextended. So the reason I don't want to unplug these controllers is for the same reason I don't disconnect batteries in these trucks. I don't want them to lose that, that memory of the minimum and maximum range of that door travel. I don't want it to force this new sweep and then break stuff. Because usually shit breaks at the worst possible time. You know what I'm saying? So you can keep this thing plugged in. You can do your 12 volt test to make sure you got the right brown wire, whether it's in the 03 or the 04 manual or auto temperature controllers and you can move on with the modification. The last thing you want to do when you're trying to do something like make your cigarette lighter outlet a switch power source instead of a constant power source is break one of those actuators during this process. Now let's get back and install this motherfucker. So this isn't really a big deal. I just wanted to extend this wire out a little bit. So we've got more than enough room back here to stash this relay. Now don't forget to put your fuse back in for your aux power back in the rear fuse block. We've got no juice to the vape, we've got no juice to the tablet. Go ahead and turn the key on. Tablet's charging. 
Vapes charging. Vapes not charging. Tablets not charging. So even if we turn HVAC off, since we tapped into ignition three, we're still gonna have power with the key on. It doesn't have anything to do with HVAC being on or off. So anytime the key's in run, whether the truck's running or like right now where the key's in run but the truck's off, we're gonna be charging. That outlet's gonna have power. And again, turn it off. We lose it here, we lose it there. We now have a switched power outlet. So even though I showed the right outlet here in minty green, my 2004 Trailblazer, uh, this would work with any of the Trailblazer or Envoys or anything. Even though I think the Envoy only has one power outlet. Okay, I was wrong. The Envoys have two power outlets, at least in ruby red, my 2007 Envoy. The outlet here in between the four-wheel drive switch and the rear wiper switch, that's off of Fuse 13. So the other one's off of aux power. Thank you, Ruby Red. I had no idea that in between filming that minty green video and editing the minty green video that you'd be in my life. I'm glad you are. Also, fuck you. I can't say that anyone has specifically requested this for any other outlet other than one or both up front. So a couple things to talk about with these power outlets. If you're trying to do this to correct a problem, like a fuse that keeps blowing, this isn't going to fix it. So if you're trying to use this as a way to get around a, a, a different problem, particularly cheap Chinese phone chargers that tend to blow fuses, this isn't going to fix it. Don't use that Ignition 3 brown wire to power your cigarette lighter. Don't do it. Like a lot of things, there's different ways that this could have been done. This is just how I would do it in my personal vehicle. I've seen it recommended to just wire the orange wire directly up to the ignition switch to one of those circuits that only gets power when the key is on. If that works for you, that's cool. I've seen the crappy add a circuit fuse thing he's used. I wouldn't do it, but if that's what works for you, that's cool. Some people that have the aftermarket radio and the trailblazers will use like the antenna turn on or some shit to do that. If that's what you want to do, that's cool. However you want to do it is cool. I really don't care. The question was, how would I do it in mine? That's how I would do it. This was recommended by a YouTube channel that I watch. It goes by the name of Cheap Geek. I'm gonna put up a link to his video because it really goes in depth about this thing. I bought one and it was so awesome, I bought another one. So I got one in each of my vehicles. I can charge my phone and my tablet fast, no problem. Charge two vapes at the same time, no problem. This thing really is the shit. Anyway, we learned a lot today. We learned a lot about the cigarette lighters, the fuses to them and really how we can change it from a constant power source to a switched power source. Pretty cool, right? Well, yeah, I guess it was pretty cool. We did some wiring and shit. So there you have it. Trailblazer power outlet, converting it from constant to switched. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, fuck this shit. Let's go on a road test. Ever since you rewired my outlets, my turn signals don't work. Actually, I don't know if these things ever work. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Well, not children of all ages. This is for mature audiences only. 2001 Volkswagen Passat out on a little road test. Some kind of animals enjoying a meal out on the road. Almost ran them over. Fuck them motherfuckers. One cool thing about this Passat, nothing. Actually, not only is this the best buy, but it's also been reduced, just so you guys know. Anyway, on to the road test. Do a little balancing act here, but I'm gonna give them a fair shake. Just riding around in this, uh, I might have said Jetta earlier but this is really a Passat. I wouldn't know the difference. It's all pink on the inside. Am I right? Eh? Eh? This car had been evaluated by another mechanic. Did a bunch of work to it. They took it to get inspected and uh, it didn't even leave the parking lot. So a couple of coils later, well, about as good as a 2001 Passat can get, I guess. Ride kind of sucks. You can see me bouncing around. This isn't some kind of exaggeration. Why 
Why am I talking about this stupid car? Well, I was going to do a spiel about um, mechanics not doing the road test. Like right now, I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting paid at this very moment. I don't care. See, my name is associated with this car and with this repair now. My name is associated with it. And that means a lot to me. So if it means I've got to take 20 minutes out of my day and drive this car, and that way I know that everything's good, at least for right now, it gives me the peace of mind to sign off on this motherfucker, it's 20 minutes well spent. Even though I don't get paid for it, I don't care. My reputation is worth more than 20 minutes of my time. Anyway, I don't know what the fuck I was going to talk about. Did that camera just watch me move? Or am I... I don't think I'm high. I don't know what's going on there. I looked over that way and the camera kind of moved that way. That's weird. Anyway, my homeboy got my son a football for his birthday. This is like last year. And it warmed up this year and he's like, Dad, I want to play football. All right. Now, what he got was, it's not like an NFL regulation football. It's a decent sized football. Uh, but it's a hard football. It's hard. So we're out playing football the other night. I make the mistake of throwing the football up and catching it myself. He saw that. He had to do it. So he throws the football up. It bounces off his hands. Hits him right in the face. He starts crying. I thought it was funny. I'm sorry. It is what it is. So he gets mad at me. But he walks it off. It's all good. He throws the football up again goes to catch it totally misses the football hits the ground bounces up hits him right in the same spot in the fucking face I mean, I'm sorry pal but that shit's just funny I, you know I can't I can't uh, discriminate just because you're my kid I can't like say oh that's not funny that's sir it's funny so what I ended up doing was I ended up getting him like a nerf football from Amazon I didn't get the Nerf brand because that shit was like $20, so I got like the off brand. But whatever, it's a soft foam football. No big deal, right? So last night, we go outside to play football. He's like, Dad, I want to throw the football up and catch it. I'm like, okay, I got to stand there and watch you throw the football to yourself. He throws the football up. He runs over to catch it. It bounces off his hands. It hits him right in the fucking face. And he's okay. I was like, did it hurt? He said, no. I said, oh, that's cool, man. I gave him the thumbs up. No problem, right? Thought the problem was solved. Next, he throws the football, he runs after it, he trips, and he fucking face plants right in the backyard. Oh, it was, shit was so funny. So then he cried and he got mad. And There's no real point to that story. I just thought it was funny. Also, the following diagram was drawn with a snap-on pen. How does that make you feel? Are you pissed off? Are you hostile? Do you have some cleverly crafted joke? about how this will cost you $33 a week for the next 40 years. Do you want to talk about sacrificing children or body parts to obtain said Snap-on pen? Any other metaphors about insert cheap brand here is better than Snap-on? Look, I get it. You can't afford the Snap-on pen. It's okay. Do you draw enough original content to justify the cost of the Snap-on pen? I mean, Bic makes a good pen, and Papermate makes a good pen, and the great value brand at Walmart, I'm sure they make a great pen. You don't really need the snap one pen. It's a fucking pen. It's just a fucking pen. You gonna come take shots of me and my content when the only ammo in your arsenal is metaphors taken from someone who doesn't do this shit every day? Fuck you.